People are always asking me why I've never made a video about how to waterproof your quad. And the truth is, I don't. I don't put conformal coating on my quads or any of the other waterproofing methods. Really, I just fly when it's sunny. And if it's raining outside, I just go in and I do something else. And it's not like it snows here or like there's a giant swimming pool that I'm gonna crash in. Just don't, I've never crashed in this swimming pool, not once. Okay, once. Okay, I did it once. So I guess it's time to make a video about waterproofing. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. I really did fly my Mobile 6 into my pool in the middle of doing a review of it, and it ruined one of the ESCs. This is a bottle of silicon conformal coating, and it's the approach to waterproofing that we're gonna be focusing on in this video. I wanna acknowledge that there are other products out there that can be used to waterproof electronics, some of them marketed specifically towards drones, and some of them have advantages over conformal coating. We're gonna be talking about the limitations and disadvantages of conformal coating as we go into this video. But there are two main reasons why I'm focusing on conformal coating in this video. I think overall it has has a good balance of performance versus price versus availability. Some of the uh, substances out there that are better than conformal, you, they're not widely available, whereas conformal is generally widely available. And number two, I, I have some today. And I need to waterproof this. This is the replacement Mobile that I bought out of my own pocket. And if I crash it into the pool, I want to... Um, make sure it's waterproofed. In fact, I might even finish my review of this and then intentionally crash it into the pool to test how good of a wood job my waterproofing did. So you better watch to the end of the video. Crap, now I have to do that. Otherwise you'll watch the end of the video and I'll have misled you. Here's the first thing that's annoying about conformal coating is it always dries the lid shut. So I always try not to put the lid on too tight. So that when it dries shut, I will be able to Ah, oh, crack it loose. Now this stuff comes in various dispensing mechanisms. You can buy it in a spray bottle, but I don't recommend you use a spray bottle to apply it to quadcopter parts. I'll tell you why in just a second. Rather, I suggest you buy the type with the brush in the cap, and basically you just paint it on. Ooh, it smells good too. Definitely apply this stuff in an area with no <sighs> airflow. So we're just gonna paint that conformal coating on, and you'll see it will produce a thin layer of basically, I guess it's silicon, plastic, I don't know what it is. And we wanna just cover all, we wanna basically cover the whole board, except for the things that if you get conformal coating on it, it will ruin them. But I'm just gonna keep painting this on for now and try to cover all the electronics, nice thick coat get it all on there and then let it dry. Now the camera brings us to the first thing that you don't want to get conformal coating on. There are some things that will just be damaged by the chemicals in the conformal coating and the camera's sensor is one of those things. So if you're the kind of person who would literally open up your camera and try and paint conformal coating everywhere on it, you're gonna to have to be very careful to either number one, just not brush it onto the sensor itself or number two, you could Theoretically, you could mask off the sensor in some way. But that's part of the reason why I don't suggest getting the spray-on application, because if you get conformal coating where it's not supposed to go, you will damage things and prevent them from working. But we should be fine to paint this onto the back of the board and maybe help cover up the five volt and the, the ground and maybe any, I don't know, a little bit can't hurt, but things that you can't completely protect may not be completely protected if you dunk your quad. And that's one thing to keep in mind. You, you're, you're basically trying to, trying to stack the odds in your favor. It's really difficult or impossible to completely waterproof a drone. I mean, not without just basically encasing the whole thing in some kind of a container. Um, these kind of paint on sprays and stuff can only go so far, but oftentimes it will be enough. As we come to the underside of the board here, I'm gonna make a mistake that I don't want you to make. And I am going to get conformal coating into the USB port. And I'm gonna try and really goop it in there 
to make my point very clearly. Now you might think, of course you would want to waterproof the USB port. The USB port has, you know, five volts. It's electricity's in there. So you don't want water and electricity to get together. But the problem is that conformal coating protects by literally forming a layer to block electricity from getting to the other side of the layer. Uh, and unfortunately, that's how USB ports work. Electricity has to get <laughs> to the other side of the, of the port. So if you get conformal coating on any kind of plug, like your camera plug, if you have an ESC plug, if you have a USB plug, if you get it on any kind of plug or port, it won't work. Don't believe me? So now I've given the conformal coating a little bit of time to dry and we're just gonna plug in USB here and see if this flight controller powers up. Nothing, doesn't work. And if I had plugged in that USB cable with the wet conformal coating in there, it could have gotten conformal onto my USB cable and I don't know, maybe made my USB cable not work either. So what's the workaround here? Well, one workaround that people use is to plug in stuff to the ports before you start applying the conformal. Plug in a USB cable and then just sort of paint around it. If your camera plug and your ESC plug are all plugged in, the conformal can't get in there and it's probably not gonna cause a problem. But if you have any open plugs or ports and conformal gets in there, it's gonna make them not work. The other things that are affected by conformal are anything that requires electrical contact to work. For example, your bootloader button. Your, your buttons if on your video transmitter, the button that changes the output power and so forth. All of these buttons make electrical contact. And so if the conformal coating gets in there, then they can't do their job. The other thing that stands out that you definitely don't wanna get conformal on is if your flight controller has a barometer. The barometer has a tiny little hole that lets air pressure changes get into and out of the barometer. And if you paint over it with conformal, then your barometer is not gonna work. Those are the main things that you wanna make sure you don't get conformal on. The camera sensor, a barometer, any buttons, and any plugs or ports. Other than that, go hog wild. Once you apply the conformal coating, how do you know that you got it like everywhere that you wanted it to go and you didn't leave like a, a bare spot that's gonna mess you up when you crash in the pool or something? If you look at the board under a bright light, you can clearly see a shininess that the conformal coating leaves when it dries. That is the conformal coating, coating the board. Another way to go about it, and I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate this to you because I don't have a black light, but if you have a UV or black light, then uh, the conformal coating shows up very, very clearly under black light, and that is a more sort of certain way of checking that it's got everywhere that it needs to be. What if I needed to solder on a new motor to this board? Would I have to remove the conformal coating somehow before I did that. Great news, you don't. You can just take a hot soldering iron and literally just desolder this joint as if the conformal coating wasn't even there. It will melt and sort of burn away, doesn't hurt anything. And then when you're done, when you're done completing the joint, just dab a little bit more conformal coating on to cover it back up again. So you can solder straight through it. If you ever do need to remove conformal coating, alcohol uh, like isopropyl alcohol is one way to do it and you can just go in there with a Q-tip and wipe it off if that's something you wanted to do. But I, I mean, I guess if you got somewhere where you didn't want it to be, you could try alcohol to get it away and maybe it'll start working again. I'm looking at you, my USB cable. Now in just a second, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna dunk this drone in the pool and we're gonna see if my waterproofing attempt has been effective. And if I succeed in waterproofing this drone and it survives, then you gotta hit the like button because presumably your drone would also survive based on the contents in this video and that's gotta be worth a like, right? But hold that, hold that like until we find out if it succeeds, better succeed. Before we do that though, I wanna acknowledge a couple other types of drone waterproofing materials. So for example, here's FPV worry-free, high performance, blah, 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 Coat King, water resistant electronics. And not all of them are FPV specific. Here's just good old liquid electrical tape. The FPV specific ones, uh, in my opinion, they often don't really perform better than silicon conformal coating. I know the manufacturers will tell you that they do and maybe they're right, but silicone conformal coating performs as 
I think it performs as well as the specialized ones, and it is usually way, way cheaper. You get a whole giant bottle of it for $10, whereas then they give you a little vial for the same price. If we look at consumer stuff like liquid electrical tape, it's not actually intended for waterproofing, and water can still get up underneath it, although it's better than nothing. And some of the other sprays out there, and the name isn't coming to me, maybe it's Corrosion X, they actually dry to this really gummy texture that attracts dust and is impossible to clean. The bottom line is that I just think that conformal coating is the first place you should go if you're thinking about waterproofing for all the reasons that I've talked about here. But I do want to acknowledge, especially the FPV specific ones, a small company trying to make a living, you should look at those products but they're just not the ones I'm focusing on in this video. Well, I guess uh, there's nothing to do now but go outside and take my medicine. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna plug in a battery. I'm gonna dunk the quad into the water. And then we're gonna talk about what needs to happen next. The quad is on and into the water we go. Now at this point, the next thing you're probably thinking is, oh my God, get the damn thing out of the water. But you should not rush to get something out of water as fast as possible. The first thing you should actually do is unplug the battery while it is still underwater. Because while the quad is underwater, the electricity is going, well, kind of everywhere into the water. It's nowhere in particular. But as soon as you lift it out of the water, if the battery is still plugged in, then it will just, it will go potentially places it's really not supposed to go and things can get damaged. So number one, unplug while the quad is still underwater. Number two, get it out of the water and then, then you got some decisions to make. You see, the water itself, fresh water is not actually very conductive it is somewhat conductive, salt water is more conductive, and most importantly, salt water will corrode and oxidize uh, in the presence of electricity way, way, way more than fresh water. But fresh water isn't gonna actually do that much damage to this thing. The main thing that fresh water is gonna do is leave minerals behind. So there's minerals in this water, it is not distilled water. And as long as we thoroughly dry this, then probably, no harm will be done as long as we unplugged it while it was still underwater. But then a thing that happens is a few weeks later, it just dies. And we are like, why? And it's because there was leftover corrosion from minerals that were left on. So whether you're in salt water or fresh water, the very next thing you're gonna wanna do is rinse this with uh, ideally, distilled water is one of the best. If you have electronics spray cleaner fluid, that works really well, but you may not have that. Um, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol will work pretty well too, although isopropyl alcohol will attract some moisture, and then if you don't dry it thoroughly, you can get yourself in trouble. You wanna rinse this to get any leftover minerals off. That's true for fresh water, and it is especially true for salt water. Once you've rinsed off the quad, the next thing you need to do is dry it off. And despite what you may have heard, no, the best way to do it is not with a bag of rice. I know that's commonly done and sometimes it even works, but the professional electronics restorers, they're not using bags of rice. What they say the best thing to do is, is to use moving air. So we got a fan here and we're just gonna set this on a fan and we're gonna turn the fan on and we're gonna let it sit. I'm not gonna do that because it'll blow in this microphone and it'll ruin the audio, but we're gonna let that sit until it is well and truly dry and sit, let it sit longer than you think. You really wanna make sure it is thoroughly, thoroughly dried, flip it over, etc. like a day maybe. And then when it's fully dried, will come the moment of truth. I told you it would ruin the audio, right? <sighs> the moment of truth is here. We plug in a battery and we see if she flies. How, do, how good did my water protection do? Did you hit the like button yet? Just saying, these things are like 120 bucks and it, they're out of stock everywhere and if I ruined it, I'm gonna be very sad. That doesn't surprise me very much. It, you know, it basically, Oh, turned on. Telemetry's working. That's a good sign. Uh, RSSI looks normal. Wouldn't have expected the receiver to be damaged, but you never know. 
The real test will be when we arm it, do all the motor spin. Three, two, one. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> oh, I'm so relieved. I can't guarantee that if you follow the steps in this video that your electronics will work. Anytime electronics go in water, there's a chance of them being damaged. And that is especially true if you go in salt water. But I hope that by following the steps in this video, you can maximize your chances of recovering stuff that goes in the water if that ever happens to you. You might be wondering why I was so freaking anxious about damaging this Mo Beetle. I mean, it's just a tiny whoop, right? It's not like I don't have a tiny whoop I can fly. But the Mo Beetle is pretty special. It's got a flight controller with built-in Express LRS and a 400 milliwatt video transmitter. So it has longer range than just about any other tiny whoop out there. And uh, it's also super, super light. Uh, I still haven't decided if it's my favorite, but it's very hard to get in stock. And, and even the flight controller alone is really desirable. So I really didn't want to just destroy one for no freaking reason. If you're interested in checking out my review of this thing, I'll put a card on screen uh, and we'll, you can see how it stacks up against the venerable Mobile 6, which has been the favorite of many people. In fact, the creator of the Mobile kind of came out and said he didn't really like it. Well, you, you can watch the whole video and see what I mean. Cards on screen. See you there. Happy flying.